All right. Welcome, everybody. This is a guest speaker call, and our very own Heather Bryant is our guest speaker tonight. Um, it is April 22nd, 2016. So um, many of you already have kind of been dabbling in Heather's magic. And um, so, and for those of you who haven't been dabbling in our magic, you'll get to hear a lot about it. Um, so yeah, I was just going to leave this up to, to Heather completely to kind of talk about the things she'd like to talk about. And then also, um, you know, hopefully, um, Heather, I'll let you dictate when you want to, you know, have questions asked and that kind of thing. But if everybody okay. would go ahead and push um, everybody except Heather, if you'll help push star <laughs> six on your phone, then that will mute you out. And um, and then Heather, when she calls for questions and things like that, you'll just need to push star six to come back on the line. So, all right. Take it away, Miss Heather. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Um, well, there is so much to talk about on this subject just because it's so, I'm going to call it new, um, new, new ways to play with energy on this planet which I guess makes sense with all of the beautiful work that we've been doing, right? That our energy is expanding, so our, our toys and our tools, to me, it makes sense that we bring more of those into our experience to play with with our maybe higher levels of awareness and ability to interact with things. So um, I thought I would just kind of start with um, a little bit of um, background as far as how I even started to pay attention to this information. So I've spent many years just, you know, studying consciousness and, um, of course, along those lines, there's a lot of people that are playing with what's called free energy devices, um, natural healing techniques, energy medicine, all of those categories, right? And, yes, I've dabbled in, a, in several of those things, but not usually the ones that involve you know, making little mechanical gadgets or, um, you know, things with, with copper and other assorted um, uh, plastics and devices that are supposed to interfere with or change the um, the energies in the area or the EMF or, you know, those types of things I've not delved into at all. You know, just maybe looked at what other people are doing with a little removed sense of interest. So... This was different for me to, to A, be interested in this, and B, spend so much time on it. Um, I did hear of the person named M.T. Kesha. His last name is K-E-S-H-E. The first name, I don't know if I should try to pronounce that. Meharan <laughs> Taharoki or something. Um, his his uh, nationality is, is Iranian. Um, However, he's, he's lived in various parts of Europe, and right now he's teaching out of Italy. So um, where I was going with that was that I um, had heard of him maybe about a decade ago. Um, I heard one of the channelers, I can't remember which one, one of the channelers was saying, hey, oh, this check this guy out. So anyways, um, you know, maybe about 10 years ago, somebody said, his name, I looked up his website, I looked at some things, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. He looks like he's doing really good things for the world, you know, and I liked his vibration. I liked kind of what he was up to at the time. I think they were all trying to make spaceships or something, so it didn't really <laughs> catch my attention as much then. Um, and then back um, when Susie was getting ready for us to go to California for the event, she sent a just a, said something about him and that he was getting ready to do this classes online and start teaching the world how to make these um, power units. And when I looked it up, I don't know why, but it caught my attention, and I think I've listened to every word the man has sen said since um, then, which is a lot of words. <laughs> yeah. He gives, he gives live classes free. You know, anybody can do this wants to. Um two, three, four times a week. He talks for two, three, four, five, six hours. Um, I've, I've since the last few months kind of geared down into more of the, the health side of it because 
there are many um, uh, realms or um, systems, I guess, that he's working with, and I'll, and I'll go into that as well. And of course, with my background as a physical therapist, I was like, oh, health, let's play with that, because, gosh, that system could certainly use some help, right? <laughs> and upgrade, please. So um, I think I'll um, give a little bit of a background specifically on him, since I've got this kind of pulled up, and then I'll go in a little bit into what he calls his ethos, which is kind of his, um, his, his method of integrity, I guess, and, and what he's trying to do in the world, because that's um, useful to know. You know, if you're going to play with somebody's information and put your time and energy into it, it it's nice to know where their heart is, right, and what they're mm-hmm. um, trying to do with it. So um, he was, um, like I said, he was born in Iran, um, it's an interesting thing is his father was an x-ray engineer, so he spent the world, the, all of his time, he said, he spent in and out of hospitals and in and out of experiments that his dad was doing helping to develop x-ray technology for the medical field. Um, and so he himself went into um, college to be a, for nuclear engineering and um, went through that fairly easily, and he ended up... Um, <clears throat> having a degree as a nuclear physicist, I believe was his actual degree. So he's, you know, started off with a science head for sure. Um, And then over time he started to ask some questions, you know, how we do sometimes. It opens up a lot of avenues. Um, I think his, his first jaunt out of school was more like into the oil industry, which a lot of you know, nuclear engineers and um, things, they go into that side of it. And from what I've heard when he's talked about it, that, you know, his heart was just like, um, you know, just seeing what that system is, right, and and not really resonating with where it was going, uh, the way the money was being made, and what its effect was on the planet. And he started asking a lot of questions about, you know, what else. I can just see him way back then, you know, knowing what we know about, those things say, okay, what else is possible, right? And and with that questioning, he started to get a lot of insight, um, visual, um, you know, how you hear like people like like Tesla and so like a lot of um, uh, inventors and you know um, Einsteins and and Teslas and what how they describe that they ask the question right and then they see the answer right you know like they. They, they know it, and they see um, the pictures of how things work together, and he started getting a lot of visuals and um, information about how to use energy in a more efficient way on this planet and <clears throat> started to put that stuff to work, you know, and, and creating mechanical things, yes, you know, with copper and wires and plastics and um, chemical processes um, from his nuclear, med- nuclear physics side. And um, since then, it has evolved into pretty much being able to, to play with energy in a different way in just about every field that there is. Um, and like I said, we'll go into that a little more specifically as to kind of how those different fields are um, being affected by some of the things that he's doing. But I thought that's important, you know, to kind of know. he's He started to ask questions and receive information in that way, you know, not necessarily from book learning in school, right? Because mm-hmm. kind of how a lot of the geniuses get their information, right? Just kind of um, zoning out and, um, you know, channeling it in, opening up to some universal intelligence to come in and say, oh, okay, here's the answer to your question, <laughs> right? So, um so that's a little bit of background that way. Um, in, I'd say in summer of 2015, that wasn't too long ago, May of 2015, he came up with this thing he calls the Peace Roadmap. And his, by, by um, writing this Peace Roadmap, I'm going to read some of the sections of it because it gives a little key into where he's coming from and what he's trying to do, right? So he's actually putting in print and grounding, okay, this is how we're going, 
in his mind, right? This is how we're going to take the earth from where it is right now into a peaceful state. And this is the way he sees it happening, right? Um, so um, let me see. I'm going to try not to, to read the whole thing. I'm going to pull out some excerpts here because it's still information. Um, so it says, um, starting May of 2015, the Kesha Foundation in its weekly workshops, announced the beginning of setting up the procedure for establishing the promised world peace. In this announcement, we explained that the process to achieve global peace will take shape in the coming months through the work of the Kesha Foundation and the release of further new knowledge through the teaching arm of the Foundation during live stream sections from the Spaceship Institute in Italy. These teachings... Um, I'm going to kind of paraphrase here. Um, We'll continue to teach new scientific systems that will open a path to the process of using new technology for establishing peace. We'll teach step-by-step procedures that start to bring into action what it takes to achieve the ultimate goal of this foundation. Um, Let me kind of pass down a little bit here. The roadmap, we rely on the total collective efforts of the human race to develop and deliver the technology technology to the world public, which takes the need for governments, religions, um, I'm going to paraphrase here, but basically any kind of um, government-created system. It takes um, the need for those out of the equation, eliminating the need for consent of the present controllers of human souls. So he's, he's not trying to, he's not working little here. He's working big. You know, it's not like um, I'm going to teach you how to make a little energy device for your home so you won't have to pay for so much electricity. It, it goes way deeper than that, right? He's um, very... just goes to show you, urban. too, Heather, the, the power of that intention, too, because when you... If you read that as the first thing that he created and then look at what he's doing now, that's just mind-blowing. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. And he, he definitely asks, asks the question, you know, if I want to assist this planet in becoming a peaceful place to live, how would I start, right, and what would I do? Yeah. And he's really intelligent in how he's done that because unlike others maybe that have, yeah, had some great ideas, um, but said, okay, I'm the inventor, I created this thing, and I'm going to sell it to everybody, right? Mm-hmm. And, and not too many of them have made it, right? There have been a lot of them that have been terminated or, you know, their information. For whatever reason, it wasn't able to ground here. Um, either, you know, or we weren't ready for it. But um, I see the intelligence in the design of what he's doing is teaching regular folks how to do all this stuff, and here you are in your kitchen in your garage, right, Um, carrying on with with this intention and making the thing, and um, it's not him or a person doing it, it's a collective doing it, Mm -hmm. and and physically doing it, you know, not just thinking about it or wanting to buy one, and his, um, his main plan has been to give this technology to third world countries, um, to people that don't, you know, have much money or time or investment or whatever in a way that you could just go and find this stuff, um, you know, in another country, you could just go to the dump and find this stuff and put it together, right? You, you know, you collect old plastic water bottles and old, peel old copper wires out of something that, that's been tossed away, and you can make this stuff. And that's what he wants. He wants it... Um, doable, right, for, for all the different people. And uh, and he's, he's not just doing it for that either. I mean, he's, he's being very open with every single government, every single um, uh, nation. You know, he's like, okay, this is the technology that is going to be changing this planet. Either work with us with this or it's going to happen without your help, you know. Mm-hmm. And, boy, how intelligent is that, right? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. <laughs> brave slash intelligent, uh, you know, all of the above. Okay, so um, I'm just going to paraphrase down. I'm, I'll um, post a copy of this Roadmap to Peace on, on our site because it 
really goes into a lot more detail, but I want to kind of move along in some of our discussion. Just that basically he's, um, and, and he says, like, I'm going to read kind of just the end here, that he's, he's aware that, that he's um, here to bring this information in, but like a good um, um, benevolent teacher, he's not really invested in whether we use it or not or whether we do anything with it or not or whether our planet changes or not. That would be really nice. But, you know, he knows he doesn't have a, uh, what do you call that, like a conclusion about it or a, um, uh, what, what's yeah, the word He's not for looking that, for right? a specific outcome, yeah. Yeah, he's not invested in the outcome, okay. And that's, you know, yeah. I see a lot of um, really higher consciousness um, awarenesses that, that are the way he talks, the way he presents himself, he's very benevolent very um i just feel a lot of heart <laughs> a lot of heart in there um and uh so he's saying um i have all that the universe has at my disposal to bring about change but it's in the hand of the man of this planet and women to start this process i can only assist in mm-hmm. in My name I will act, and in my name I shall succeed, if need be, single-handedly. But with the investment of the man, the aim to achieve peace in this time shall not be diverted from. I guess he's, you know, just saying that he's going to commit his life, basically, to that, and he's encouraging people that are on that same kind of a intention to help out right Mm -hmm. so yeah i won't finish the rest of that there's a lot to it and it's it's pretty well i think that's enough to kind of get the gist of it yeah so um now um along the line of the subject of what he calls the ethos to me that's like okay this is the um you know my overall intention and how i operate my business right um he also I wrote down here that I wanted to bring up that with any of these technologies, a big or the biggest part of it is the concept of giving, right? So um, he encourages people to, you know, make one for yourself and make one for your enemy, right? Or mm-hmm. make one for your yourself and donate one to, um, you know, a, a school, a, a home, a, <clears throat> a country that's... <laughs> That's, that's needing some resources, you know, things like that. And, and he operates his company that way. Even if people buy things from, from him directly, um, then it's like an automatic part of that is a donation for one of those units to go to, to another place. You know, like, like the Tom shoes, you know, you buy one set of shoes and the other set of shoes goes to somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And also, so, and it it even comes down to, like, say you're using a little, um, one of these pins or one of these packets on your body. He over and over says, you know, you're getting ready to receive your your balance, your healing, whatever you want to call it, from this um, universal plasma. So to, um, before you even do that, um, is to to give appreciation, to give love, to give... um, that type of a um, initiator force, right? Like, and it can be to anything. It can be you can be loving that pad for helping you. You can be loving, um, you know, the people around you or the space that you're in. But to that's what starts the flow, right? Which makes sense of that universal field. It it reacts to consciousness. It reacts to love, and that's kind of a like a big part of most of these things. Which is really, really cool, you know? Because a lot of technologies and things like that, they really bypass that whole consciousness subject, and he doesn't. It's all up in his stuff. There's so much um, consciousness education along with, okay, we're going to wrap the coils, right? (laughs) You know, but realize that this thing that you're making is not going to turn out um, doing what you want it to do if you don't have pure intent, right, as to what you're going to be using it for. Um, and 
and and to have you know trust, trust in it that it is going to work, right? Because there's a lot of people that will make one of these things and they say, oh, it doesn't work, and he'll say, well, did you um, just kind of decide all along that it wasn't going to work? You know that you're trying to judge this, you're trying to judge me, you're trying to prove something instead of create something, you know. He so he so gets all those connections, and he says it, you know, to people in class all the time. But it, it probably goes over a lot of heads. But if he says it enough, maybe some of them will kind of get that. Okay. So how are we doing, Susie? We're doing great. Okay. Yeah. So um, before I go into what is GANS and what is Nano, I'm going to just kind of briefly give an overview of like which. In industries or, or earth systems that he's got different toys for. Yeah. Well, you know what? I just thought it's going to make more sense if I talk about the GANs and the nano first, huh, Susie? Because that's yeah, yeah. kind of Yeah, and then we'll can the, go into some of the different health tools that you've created and what yeah. you've noticed about them. Okay. Sounds good. So there's there's a couple of terms that go with this teaching and technology. One is called GANS, G-A-N-S, and the other one is called nanoparticles. And those are both a form of plasma. Okay, so there's three three new terms. One's GANS, one's nano, and one is plasma. And he uses the word plasma a lot. I was like, what are you talking about? Um, to me, plasma would be like we talk about um, space and things in space, right, in, in our work with Susie. Mm-hmm. And to me, the, the plasma is possibly the space, right, that, that yeah. the, the things occur in. <laughs> and, um, and he speaks of plasma as like a, a torus field, a vortex, a... Um, like a balanced, coherent field where something will take place in, right? And it, whatever takes place in that would be, you know, energy coming into the situation that is required and energy leaving the situation that's not required for whatever the purpose is. It could be. Is, um, is it kind of like is it kind of like void space then, Heather? I mean, is I, that? I, I I think that that's one of the possible terms. Um, I plan on sitting down with Dr. Copen with those. <laughs> oh, okay, you know, cool. Yeah, that'd be you know, great. What would be yeah. some good descriptors of, you know, what, in our terminology, you know, our metaphysical right, terminology. Right, Because right. this, I mean, he's not mm, metaphysical, I guess, in a, in a you know, open um, yeah. way. He doesn't really teach metaphysics, but, oh, my gosh, he so understands all the concepts, right? He may use different words for it. And right. And um so, um, so yeah, some, well, some of those words, it's like the multidimensional field, um, the space of all potentials and possibilities. The uh, cool thing is with this GANS and with this nano and with these toys, somehow we are creating that space, you know, in a patch or in a pin or in a, a little um, bucket for an energy device. So it's like a little coherent space builder. Um, So I'm going to go in a little bit more into GANs and nano, and I'm not going to get real into it because you could probably go on for a long time, just enough to maybe base this discussion and and, um, and if you want more information, there's plenty of it, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So a nanoparticle would be, um, for example, I'm going to give a reference to the the people that have received some of our toys, but also... um, if you take a piece of copper wire, copper is copper, right? It's a copper color. It's nice and shiny. It's, it's a little bit on the um, orangey copper side, right? So when you nano coat a piece of copper, it becomes black. And the black is the separated and spaced out little copper molecules all along the surface of a piece of copper. So in the copper wire, they're all jammed together, right? When you have a molecule, you've got all the little electrons holding onto each other so tight that you think that wire is a good solid piece of something and you can't put your hand through it, right? So 
when you're creating a nanoparticle on the outside of that wire, you're popping those open like popcorn, is what he explains, and you're separating each molecule and lining them up in a nice little line, separate of each other. They're not attached to each other. They're not um, in, in a material way any longer. They're separated to become almost like little individual noble particles. And um, a noble particle doesn't need anything else. It's fully functional on its own. It doesn't need to attach to anything else. And it is kind of like a little sun sitting there doing its sun thing, right? <laughs> Which uh, is a little vortex field, right? So, so that would be a, a nanoparticle in a kind of a basic understanding. Is that good enough to start with, Susie? Yeah, it sounds great. The, can I ask you a question though? When when they yeah. um when they separate the particles, are they separating the particles of the um of the copper and turning it into that nano state so that you have a bunch of individuated um instead to when you say that, Heather, the only thing I I think of is like having all of these particles like collapsed into each other and the chaos and the and the confusion or whatever of all of that trying you know kind of being copper and then if if, mm-hmm. if I'm understanding you correctly when you separate each one of those out into their own little let's say little um, aspects of it's like to me it's all the individuated to use our terminology it would be all the individuated sovereign spaces yes. sovereign void yes. spaces right yeah that's, that's that the analogy that i get mm-hmm. okay okay all right that's like, yeah which I is, would say which like is maybe, much more which is uh, much more creative than than yeah to have all of those sovereign individuals let's say yeah. is much more yeah. creative so that nano coding is much more creative than to have the copper which is all kind of... Yeah, and what, what happens with that, you know, when you plug a copper wire into the electrical circuit in the wall, the electrical current is having to swim upstream and push its way through a lot of crowded up little molecules all shoved together, right? Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's a little fun and funny, but he's saying that copper has been um, kind of mistreated on this planet. It doesn't like to work that way with electricity. This is really right. the way that copper wants to work with current. It's more efficient. It actually becomes a superconductor of anything. I mean, it doesn't have to be electricity. Oh, wow. It can super. It can superconduct whatever your intention is. It can superconduct that nice little multidimensional field we were just talking about. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. It, it's pretty darn amazing. Um, cool. So I think that's probably good enough to go with that one. Unless it'd probably be better to wait maybe till the end for questions. Yeah, I well, need to say yeah. about scans a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So but, yeah, you went on to the GAN. Yeah. So those are the kind of the the two terms, nano and GAN. The nano is the black stuff on the outside of the copper wire. Now we use that to make what is called GANs, and the GAN stands for a gas G, right, in a nano state. So we're still doing kind of on the nano subject, but now we're involving a gas in that. Instead of a solid particle like we did with the copper, we're doing it with a gas. So one of the main ones we make is a little white fluffy stuff that makes itself in the bottom of a little white tub, um, excuse me, a little water tub. And we have one nano-coated copper plate on one side and a zinc plate on the other side. And there's a way that you connect it. It's not rocket science. Really, anybody can do it. Um, But because of that state between these two plates, if you can imagine a little um, storage tub, you know, those little little clear storage tubs that you use to put your shoes in or your projects, right? You put one nano-coated copper plate on one side, a zinc plate on the other side, and that's in salt water, salt water bath. And between the two plates is created the plasma field of carbon. Okay, that's another whole study, but believe me, <laughs> it creates and the, plasma, the plasma field that would represent the frequency of carbon. Okay? And is that 
And is that because specifically you've used zinc and copper? Is that or? Yeah, it it has a lot to do with what is called the, <clears throat> you know, like the atomic numbers, the molar mass of those yep. different metals and um, how they interact with each other in a space. Oh. Okay, cool. Yeah. Whew. It gets, yeah, and it, it took me, gosh, guys, it took me months to even get to the point where I thought I could even explain any of this, and I'm still not um, got it all. <laughs> so I'm doing, I'm doing my best to pass it on. Hopefully that gives enough information just to kind of say, hey, that's kind of cool and neat and different. Let's play with that, you know. <laughs> or not. <laughs> So the, okay, so we have the, the little tub of water. It's creating the field of carbon. So what occurs in the water is it actually sucks the carbon dioxide out of the air above it, which, by the way, is really good for clean, cleaning out carbon emissions from the air. <laughs> it's one of the applications. Um, so, but down in the water, it's separating. Okay, carbon dioxide is CO2, right? One carbon, two oxygen. So what happens down in that little tub of water is it separates those three little guys <clears throat> into individual, again, individual um, atoms. So here's the carbon floating around separate of the oxygen, separate of the other oxygen. They're not attached to each other anymore. So they're in their, their GAN state or their, their – <clears throat> well, will you, I like your term. They're sovereign state, right? They're, they're noble particle state, which is basically a free – um, he, he describes it as a little mini sun, right? There's a little free torus floating around in there just hanging out going, hey, what you want me to do, right? And, it, <clears throat> and they do. They, it responds to me. It responds to consciousness. It responds to, okay, now I'm in an environment where there's some imbalance. What can we do to balance here? Right. You know, it has some innate intelligence about that. <clears throat> so then we collect, collect the little white fluffy stuff that, that occurs in there, which is the GANs. And then that's what's in those patches it, that we've been making. Is you just suck that out, you clean it. Um, there's a way of cleaning it, and then you put it in the patch. And what comes out then in your little your patch or your cup or whatever you're using it in is it patterns. It can pattern water with that that frequency of the GANs, which is really high, by the way. <laughs> we we just had Dr. Copen do some testing on those. Um, on those GANS patches, and oh my God, um, I don't know if we want to get into that here, but I can I can post some information about it later on the on the website. I didn't realize. Yeah, tell them tell them what the frequency Jesus. was, Heather, because I think I mean because I think a, enough people anyway have had sessions with. I mean, tell them what Christ consciousness is, and then tell them what this stuff is. Okay. Huh, I was just like, whoa. Um, so um, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm remembering that his number for checking like a soul frequency, he uses dowsing. Yep. He uses a little, um, his methods that he uses for, for numbers. And he can check you or um, a particular item and see what its frequency is buzzing it at in hertz, right, how many hertz. And a Christ conscious being, I believe he said was 28,000 hertz. Um, that would be like the level of that person in a regular, like, 3D kind of running around and doing their regular human thing person would be like, I think he said five to 8,000. Mm-hmm. I don't have those notes in front of me, but just to give you some perspective, right? And then a Christ of being would be 28,000. Um, and he checked Kesha, by the way, too, but I, you know, I feel like that's almost personal information. I'm just going to say he's really damn high. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. But, um, and so I asked, you know, what frequency are we creating with these things? They checked each one, and the ocean GANS is 25,700 hertz, 25,700. That's huge. That's mm-hmm. really, really high. Is it, you know, I don't, I don't know what he's – did you say he's kind of checked, like, the the optimism kind of group in general and – Yeah. Like that? Yeah, but Bill Tiller and – yeah, Bill Tiller and – Robert both, I mean, it's Robert, every single time he talks to me, you know, he's always, like, floored at what the level of consciousness is within facilitator, you know, within people, within the awesomism practitioner process. And and that's another reason why, you know, I really wanted to have 
this conversation, especially after I felt this stuff in Boulder, because from <laughs> my point of view, it is an outer manifestation of, you know, what what our potentials and possibilities are, you know, so it's mm-hmm. awesome to be playing with this stuff to to know these things right. about ourselves, right. so... Right, and it, it was about the same for the other ones. The, the CO2 games was 26,700, and um, same. And the the CH3 was the same, 26,700 hertz. Oh, hey. um, and then the copper oxide, the green one, was um, just a little bit higher, 26,770, so just a little higher. So, I mean, there was a little bit of a gradient there, but, oh, my gosh, they're all way up there. <laughs> And that's why people feel the love with it. You know, people have told me they you know, they pick up the package and they open that up and they can just feel like love emanating from it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. to me, that's that's that vibration, right? Is is it's uh, it is a love vibration yeah. when you get up that high. <laughs> you know, there's just there's not much. Yeah, uh, and un and, well, an unconditional love vibration. You know, which yeah. Is, yeah, I mean, so it's, yeah, it's interesting what it brings forth, you know, not necessarily always what you think love is, but it's, yeah, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anyway, Yeah, and, then, and the, opp- the opportunity is in that coherent space like that would be an opportunity to shift, you know, whatever yeah. is ready to shift. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's been cute. We've had some feedback from people just kind of tracking their um, packages across the country as they're coming to them, like we sent them the little sample packets of the GANs and, and the awareness is that, that um, you know, just sitting in a post office somewhere, right, is emanating what it emanates, right, and the people and the beings around it have the opportunity to shift in that field. Yeah. So, I mean, that is just way cool. <laughs> I'm loving that. <laughs> Talk about easy light work. You just you don't even have to send it. To anybody. You're just sending it around the world, right? And just keep it. And and that's part of um, Kesha's kind of overall. I I can see what he's doing. You know, if there is a pocket of um, this high vibe in this little house over here, right? And then a couple thousand miles away, there's another one, and then another country and another country. I can just see all these little beacons, right? And mm-hmm. eventually they come together, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. they touch, they, you know, resonate with each other, and then the whole darn planet is buzzing pretty good. Yeah. He, he knows what he's doing. He knows yeah. What he's doing. <laughs> okay. All right, well, I was going to go kind of with kind of some old overview of the different systems that the different toys play in. Sounds great. Right? So we, we talked a little bit about our patches. There's a whole health side to this. And the patches and the pins are like a minute part of that. It goes into all kinds of other fun things. But I'll I'll leave that one for the moment. Um, The one that he was teaching back in October was how to make a little home power unit. And, again, it's with with copper wires and copper coils. And it's a certain way that you wind them and and you, you coat them with your little nano coating, the little black coating, and you dip them in your GAN. And... All of that kind of attunes that thing that you're creating to your physical body and your energetic body. I mean, to me, it's like you're making a little mini-me over here, right? And it responds to what your body needs and wants um, energetically. And a little side effect is that it makes it a little more efficient for your house to use electricity. So, you know, the initial thing was, okay, I'm going to teach you guys how to make something to plug into your home that your electric bills will go down and everybody will be happy about that, right? And and it does and it will. Um, but the funny thing is is that nano coating likes to propagate itself, so it kind of works it what its way around your walls in your house, and it nano coats the rest of the house, which makes the whole house kind of into a superconductor mm-hmm. field, <laughs> right? And yeah, then it starts. It starts crawling up the street, you know, to your neighbor's house and to the power company. And, yeah, um, mm-hmm. that, uh, yeah, that'll really expand your little mind into what might go with that. 
because eventually what happens is you're not even using electricity anymore. You're just using the plasma field, which is, you know, energy, right? And or like people are like, well, you know, do we plug our heater into it? Well, you know, yeah, you can. And over time, just the atmosphere of the home will feel to the body like it's okay. You know, it doesn't right. necessarily need to be heated, and you don't necessarily need to be cooled. You guys are just kind of working together. <laughs> um, and then people will notice, and they are noticing, you know, that some people don't like to go in their house because they can't lie there. I mean, they can't tell untruths there. They can't um, manipulate things there. There's something about the field that has a bias for integrity. Um, mm -hmm. And then all kinds of other interesting things happen. People start, you know, getting a little more telepathic. They start, um, like, they put their hands around the unit real close. You know, sometimes they can't see their hands so much anymore. They kind of disappear. <laughs> sometimes there's, like, a little um, shiny field that starts to form around it. Um, if you can see a little plasma bubble. Um, and there's all different renditions of, of this little power unit. So I'll, I'll leave that one for the moment. That's interesting in itself. Um, the, the main thing that he says that he's here to teach is to teach um, space technology, it, that he's here to teach people how to get off the planet safely if they choose to do so. I was like, oh, is that all? <laughs> But there's there's a whole side of this where there's a bunch of guys and they're they're making these spaceship prototypes and I've I've stayed out of that you know I've just oh my there's enough to listen to on this other side um, but uh, every now and then I kind of peer into some of their programs and what they're doing and and they're they're creating systems that will allow flight and um, and transport and uh, it's quite interesting what's going on in there so I'm not going to delve into that one too much. Moving on, um, you can put, you can make, right, is that all? Um, you can take and um, make a unit for your car and um, plug that in to your um, various parts of your car. I guess they, they put it into the, to the lighter jack and then they hook it into the battery. But you can imagine what we were talking about in the house, what occurs with a car. So the idea is so that it would use less fuel right, which is cute, and it does, um, and, um, you know, people notice as they're, when they're in their car, they kind of just can't get up the the whole road rage thing because they, they feel a whole lot better after work driving home, and, um, you know, their knee that was bothering them <laughs> before, whatever, when they get into their little car ship um, <clears throat> feels a whole lot better because of that plasma field, um, yeah. Some interesting things going on with that one. Another way to play with it. So um, I'll just kind warps of warps time and travel. It definitely okay. warps time in travel. Yeah, too. So or, even just having like a yeah. patch or something in the car. Yeah, people are pouring the GANS water into their fuel tanks. They are making nano coated coils and wrapping them around the battery wires. Um, and, you know, he's like, he's telling people to, to make these and go give them to your um, police department because they run on, you know, a money stream. They've got a lot of money out for keeping people on the roads. You know, he's in Europe. I guess they have a lot more trouble than we do. But, you know, he's like, support them because if they're having to pay less, you know, they for their fuel and their cars are running more efficiently, then they're going to be able to do what they do better, right? Yeah. So that's kind of a big push in Europe right now. I'm trying to get everybody to get the information out to the police departments and, and give them the technology. Um, and then funny things happen, like people's old cars, um, you know, the places where the, um, the paint was chipped, you know, start to not look so chipped, and the things that were rusty, or the rust is not there anymore, and the carburetor that wasn't working starts to work better again. And, yeah, a lot of interesting side effects to all this. <laughs> and like, and that's all also without it that being the intention, right? That's just literally just a byproduct. It it is because you know they're putting it in there thinking, oh, I'm going to get better gas mileage. Right. You know, just like in the car, they're thinking in the house, they're thinking I'm going to put that in there to get my electric bill down. And it's like, 
Uh huh. And, <laughs> and we'll <laughs> yeah. see what else. We'll see what else happens in that nice little field. Um. Okay. So that's like the healing section, the transportation section, the spaceship section. Um. And he's really into um, food technology. You know, being as there's a lot of places in the world, there doesn't seem to be as many, uh, as much food as there are mouths to feed. Um, people were asking him recently. It's it's like a, a question always brings up a new technology device. So someone was saying, we've got all these Syrian people on our borders. How do we feed them? You know, and he's like, oh, da 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 da. He gets on his whiteboard and he says, okay, build this, do this, put the make the new batteries this way and do that and then go sit that out in the middle of the crowd of them and have them each come in and sit down in the chair and this is what you tell them to do. Like they would sit there and, you know, ask for their meal and give love to the unit, give love to whatever they can muster up giving love to. And in the process, what happens is the body receives food and nutrition. And then they get up and then they go and the next person comes in. So... (laughs) Um, And when when you think about it, I mean, it sounds a little maybe, not for our group probably, weird and magic, but that's the way the body um, Mm -hmm. utilizes food. It doesn't utilize that matter, that chunk of broccoli that you're chewing up. That's not what's traveling across your intestinal walls into your bloodstream. It's the, the, he calls it the plasma, whatever the frequency of that live happy plant that has broken down into its nano state, which it does in your hydrochloric acid in your tummy, is just like the same process we're doing in our little GAN selection chambers. It's all very, um, the same biological processes that we use. It's the same um, creative processes that the planet uses to make matter, to make critters in the ocean. It's the same process of breaking down things to their lowest energetic state and then creating matter and using energy from that state, right? So it's not like when I say it's something new, it's not really new. It's just a, an awareness of, of using what we've already got here, you know. Huh, yeah, cool beans. <laughs> so, Okay, and there's just one other area. So we have the healing, transportation, space travel, food, and, the, and home power. And then there's one other area. How are we doing on time? <laughs> You're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah. I, right. I can't Almost at an hour. Right. You're great. Okay. So, um, and then the, the last one I was going to bring up was the area of um, decontamination. And so it's, oh, wait, I forgot another one. Okay, I'll do agriculture in a minute. <laughs> so, Decontamination. So we're talking decontamination of water, um, decontamination of um, like uh, nuclear site damage to a to an area like Fukushima. Um, yeah, can you tell in. them? Yeah, I was gonna say tell mm-hmm. them the Fukushima story. <laughs> right. So um, the GANS has an effect of being able to decontaminate water. So they've tried it in all kinds of different realms. People call him and say, hey, what about, you know, our country? We, we had the mines flood, and now we got mercury all in our lake. What do we do about that? And, and then Fukushima, he actually sent a team in there at the government's request to try some of the things that he was creating. They used the GANS, and it works really, really well in cleaning out the water and um, – Funny, funny thing number two is that the byproduct of that process, because gold is so close in um, electron form formulation to mercury, and there's a lot of mercury in the, the contaminated water. So what happens when the GAN um, gets in the system with a little radioactivity going off, as well as the mercury that mercury grabs another electron, which is all it needs to be gold, and turns into monatomic gold. So part mm-hmm. of the settlement sediment at the bottom of the tubs is a hell of a lot of monatomic gold. Yeah. And what does mon- um, and what does monatomic gold go? Monatomic gold is yeah, that I mean yeah. that is the elixir of life. I mean that is the that's like yeah, life force. That's the, Go ahead. Okay, yeah, 
you may know more about it than I do. I, I looked it up and I had heard a few things about, you know, it through my alchemy studies. You know, people call it the manna. They call it um, the white gold, you know, that the alchemists were always after, you know, and, and creating that as part of their, their alchemical well, process. It, yeah, and a lot of them were after it because it was the, it's what they would consider the, um, like the fountain of youth. It was the, um, yeah. it's it's literally regenerating life force um, is what it is. So, okay. yeah, so it's that's an, a very interesting byproduct. <laughs> like yeah, like, oh, well, by the way, while we're here, um, so uh-huh. apparently that got all, um, that got a little bit wanky. There's a lot of articles about, about that and um and he's given his side of the story but apparently he was pretty much kind of kicked out of all of that um, yeah the government was wanting to do whatever they were wanting to do without a lot of eyes on what they were doing <laughs> is my understanding of it and they they um pushed you know anybody that was having anything to do with him and his association was excommunicated from that country mm-hmm. real quick and yeah, so they're doing whatever they are doing with it. Um, and he said they they um, filled up their kitties with whatever they they created there. But um, but it's cute. I've, I've seen a lot of um, research that some of the people are doing in in Africa with it, in South American countries. You know, helping to clean up the rivers and the um, problems from the mining countries. There's so many polluted rivers. Oh my gosh! But the Gans is really good at collecting together. Um, the, the stuff that's not useful for human life and packaging it up and um, I, I think transmuting it would be an appropriate word. Um, I, I don't know all of the parts of that process. I just heard some of the research and what's going on with it. It sounds really good. Um, okay, so that's that one. And then the last one is agriculture. Um, We've been playing with it some here too, but the plants apparently really like GANs. You know how part of the the plant's life cycle is CO2, right? You know, like we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out CO2. They breathe in the CO2, breathe out oxygen. So the the main GANs that we make are kind of the um, the primary GANs is this called a CO2 GAN. So it has CO2 in it, and plants really like that. And people are using it in their farms, in their hydroponics, in their aquaponics. They're seeing, just real briefly, they're seeing a lot more yield, and they're seeing um, it in a faster time, like it decreases the plant to growth time, which is useful. Um, it increases its um, heat and water tolerance, um, and they don't tend to get pests. They don't tend to need to fertilize much or as much, and People are making all kinds of funny little contraptions, you know, and anything from just burning a piece of copper and throwing it in their, their water container, you know. They, they make some GANs and they put it in the Gatorade bottle and they throw it in the vat with their fishies and their aquaponics. And all of a sudden the fishies are happier and they're breeding more and they're, you know, doing what they do more as part of the cycle and then the lettuce is getting bigger and it's growing, you know, in a shorter period of time. And then he said, you know, all of that is really cool and he, he recommended that they also follow the people that eat the, the salads because they're going to be happier people right mm-hmm. <laughs> more emotionally balanced they're going to be you know just kind of leave that place going wow man it's cool. <laughs> in a very peaceful state because they've consumed that right mm-hmm. and from what we were saying with our frequencies that we're looking at that's carried on from the water to the plant that's being eaten. Wow. Talk about exponential. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if you're eating something that's frequency is, you know, 25,600, <laughs> I mean, it's like <laughs> it's bound to have an impact, you know, when, oh, when we consider yeah. that most food that, you know, crap food that you eat or processed food that we eat, you know, again, it's going to have the consciousness of, you know, 3,000 or something like that at the most, a couple thousand. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And, oh, cool thing, number three is he said it would, it's going to repattern GMO seeds. 
and yeah. like, restore them to their natural blueprint. You soak those seeds in there. I'm like, okay, I feel an experiment coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know if that that one's been experimented out. You know, usually he'll say something, and then all the people listening are like, oh, I want to play with that. You know, they're all crazy like me, just wanting to, <laughs> to, to yeah, play, play with whatever the next what, Yeah. Uh, the little budding alchemists in their garage and kitchen playing with this stuff. So <clears throat> I think that kind of gets the, the gist of that part of the story. How are we doing here? About an hour? Good, good. Yeah, do you want to <laughs> you take like some take questions or do you want to share some? Yeah. Well, are there some things that you've noticed with specific products that, kind of will entice us into playing with them in similar ways or is there I mean is there something that you that's really stood out so far for you that you've noticed um you know what I I'm a, a pretty healthy happy balanced energetic type critter anyways I don't have a lot of like physical stuff I yeah you know I feel pretty much like me um, I know that this is very exciting to me. It's very interesting to me, and it it got me, you know, energized that direction. Um, the the few times that I've had something come up, you know, yeah, I'm like, oh, good guinea pig time, you know, like when my cat bit my my finger and it swelled up my finger and hand terribly and wasn't going away was when I was first starting making these things. So I said, oh, let me stick a patch on my finger, right? And it was quite remarkable how quickly the inflammation went down, um, the redness went down, um, <clears throat> and the, the um, range of motion was coming back, whereas it was kind of, it was in a stuck state. I mean, obviously, the hand was stiff and tight, the, the fluid was not moving through it, and there was some hmm, probably infective process kind of starting in there. And, you know me, I'd rather not go to the doctor, but <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to play. And I, I felt like it was very more more quick than anything that I you know would come up with from the traditional medical side and taking right. it down. If I if I have you know one of our nice little ascension process head intensity you know, headache things, I'll grab my patches and put them maybe one on the front, one on the back, and it it's a very quick like an easing sensation now the the intensity may still be there but it's not as much interpreted as pain or something concerning it's like the emotional part right. of it goes away right and it's allowed yeah, to be that, there and do what it's doing yeah that i've also noticed and that i definitely have noticed but the other the thing that really got me heather and why i got so excited about this in the first place is when you were demonstrating this stuff in Boulder, you know, kind of stuck in that little, that back area of the hotel and just walking back into that space, it just was, to me, the the frequency of that space was really pretty incredible. And, you know, I mean, I couldn't, I mean, Linda was, I know, making fun of me because I couldn't stop going back there because I liked, I liked the way it felt so much. Um, and the other thing I will say is the um, is was it the was it the um, which one was the one for the emotional stability? That's the CO2 again. The CO2 again, because that one also I was just I mean I mean I've done a we've done a lot of work around emotional body stuff and human psychology and balancing the coherence of that consciousness, and it is always, I don't care how much we work on it, it seems like it's always the most challenging um, aspect to work on. And when we had, you know, some of that technology underneath that chair when we were doing that particular piece, I was like, I I, I was, I mean, that convinced me right there because I was going, okay, <laughs> I've, I've never seen the emotional body work go that easily. So, mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. And, and I, I always put that little um, disclaimer, like, on the, the instruction sheet that I did and everything else that, you know, it, one, we know that, that it, it, emotions probably 
what he calls emotion, you know, is probably the the main thing that is kind of holding that physical body, whatever it is there, you know, right. the ability to release the emotion around it or something. So that's why if you yep. use the, the CO2 one, you know, 90% of the time that's going to dissipate a heck of a lot of whatever it is, and then whatever physical is left, then we can kind of look at that and play with it. But it sure is a good first line of defense, you know, yeah. first line of, of attempt at, at clearing things. And then, yeah. you know, the other two are maybe a little more specifically, um, like the green one is is got a lot of benefit as far as around, you know, joints and um, and muscle type of stuff. Um, it tends to be a little more connected with the physical body and the muscle and lymph system. And the you know, this, one. this is on the, the green one. Oh, the green one. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. This is on a little chart that's on that that um, I posted it on our Awesomeism Avatar tool page. You know, it says guidelines and precautions, and I made a little chart there. So people want to go and and look at that because it's it's always been a challenge for me to remember that. So I tried to put it down, you know, in a chart. And I've, um, and then the the little rusty colored one, the CH3 one, it's a little more in tune to. Um, uh, he calls it energy, um, the 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 blood sugar, you know. Oh, um, uh huh. So it's kind of like adding energy to whatever you're trying to shift. Is the the gotcha. way I feel it. Yeah, and and you know, there's those three. You know, there's the white one, the green one, and the uh, rusty colored one, and then the blue one is the ocean gans that we've been playing with. And it, it's not near as linear as any of that. You know, you can't actually, to me, putting it in a chart really um, doesn't do it justice because it's a lot more overlapping than that. But, you know, it's it's the general guidelines, things to start playing with. And I think a lot of people are finding out that the stuff kind of just talks to them a little bit maybe. And it's like they're like, oh, I think I'll try the white one and the green one here, you know. Yeah. And to me, that's the, the body interacting with those and saying, hey, this is what I like, or just ask the body, right? You know, what combination mm-hmm. would you like for this? Yes, that makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Do you, Heather, do you want to take any questions or anybody else's yeah. kind of experiences about? Um, yeah, yeah, let's let's do that. If, he, if anybody's on the line that, you know, has either posted something on our little avatar page about kind of how they're experiencing, what they felt, um, that would be really cute to just kind of hear your, you know, your words behind it, your emotion behind it, because there's a lot of neat things showing up on there. And uh, and even on, you know, Kesha's website, they have a whole place for testimonials, and it's amazing some of the stuff that's showing up on there. The, the link to that is on um, one of the instruction pages I posted on our sheet, too. So yeah, let's let's do that. If there's anybody that that's come in that is willing to share with the group, that'd be really cool. Yeah. So all you have to do is push star six if you want to unmute yourself. Hi, Cecilia and Heather. This is Jasmine, Alfonso, and Victor. <laughs> oh, hi, yes. Uh, How are you? <laughs> we're doing great, and. Um, you are doing great, Heather. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's yeah, a lot of love. The, the little, I was going to just uh, tell them you have the, the little avatar wizard that, that's on a Facebook page holding the pin that you've made. Exactly. Oh. And, mm-hmm. um, well, the experiences are, are huge, are a lot. And as, a, as Susie said, is a lot of um, love and balance. We have been working, Alfonso and I, in um, in a lot of uh, work for evolve ourselves. But it's so amazing what just when we hold the pen, and I felt a, a balance in my life, mm-hmm. and <laughs> and that is amazing. Also, my husband told me, Poncho told me, yes, you look like in balance. You look different. <laughs> <laughs> Just in, <laughs> oh, in, nice. like in seconds. But also, it's 
has been, I think, for us, has been all the work together. When we start reading what Heather sent to us and then to buy the things like a family project, keep us together. I think <laughs> since, since, since that moment, we began to, to create to create this difference in our life. Um, I think also when you think to, to use it, when you are building this technology for help somebody else, then I think the vibrant vibration, in, vibration increase. And then, yes, yes mm -hmm. it's, it's for, uh, for you, Kesha said something like, but it's an old phrase that I remember from the Bible, what you give, but it's a physical law also, what you give, you receive, but uh, mm. mm -hmm. several times, a thousand, a thousand four. Yes, I think um, oh, yes. You, you receive more because then um, maybe there is not a specific procedure to to use it. Your high self is, as Heather always said, like, then uh, we'll guide it to you. And um, yeah. we tried, well, we, when I was thinking on this, Technology. I was thinking in all my friends who are sick, and I was thinking uh, specifically on one of these friends, and we visited her on Wednesday, and she was skeptic. Well, it's normal, I, and to me it's better, because she, she was saying, mm, well, let's try, I, I don't know, blah, 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 and then <laughs> she got a pain because she got an injury, and, and then she... She, well, I suggest, well, call the pen, but then uh, Poncho says, well, try different because I I use it. it. I rub it. I rub it in, in another <laughs> pen that she got. And, and oh, she rub okay. it, and, and rub it works her hair. And he didn't, okay. he didn't could explain, but he, at, at the end of the, the gathering, she, she told us, please uh, build me one. <laughs> <laughs> And well, I nice. I'm go I was just gonna say, Yasmin, that um, I didn't send Yasmin a pin. She's been listening to the Kesha programs too, and she's just watched the videos online and learned how to do it. And they've been making them themselves. So oh, neat. that's just awesome. <laughs> well, yes, thank you, Yas. I, I'm gonna okay. say real briefly. She got to talk to Kesha during the class the other day about um, her testimonial with her husband and his blood pressure, and then they started asking some questions about um, allergies, and he gave a whole new information to everybody that we didn't know how to use the pins and the water and stuff, you know, with, with allergies to help, um, to, I guess, what, I guess, do you want to say a little bit about that one with the allergies? Yes. Hi Heather, this is uh, Poncho and uh, I'm Jasmine's Hi, husband. And um, yes, what uh, he said was that uh, in order to, the, to uh, balance the allergies is because uh, to start with is an unbalance. So uh, mm -hmm. the way to do that is uh, to have uh, not one pen but two pens. And one of them uh, you have to first uh, submerge in balance with lead. And he suggests to go to the tire shop, you know, and ask for used okay. or, uh, uh, or, or, or old uh, lead that you use to balance wow, your, okay. your wheels. So uh, okay. um, I'm just gonna re I'm just gonna repeat that right quick, Pancho, because I I was. Um, thing in my mind, and now I kind of get what you're saying. So there's a cup of water. You have the pen in the in the water, and there's a piece of lead in the water. Yes, L exactly. L e a d lead. Okay, mm -hmm. kind of like as a sink that pulls the energy in. Okay. Yes. So uh, then uh, you submerge that that one pen on on lead, and that will make it lower the vibration. So it will be in a different uh, vibration than the regular uh, CO2 GANS 10. So you have one on your right hand, the other one on your left hand, and that will create 
uh, an imbalance that will uh, force your your body to get into balance. So that's yeah. how you get rid of that uh, allergy. So uh, we're oh. going to try that. We just get uh, yeah. th this afternoon. Uh, as a matter of fact, we went to the tire shop and. Yes, the man was uh, <laughs> kind enough to give us for free some old oh, nice. used uh, uh, lead pieces of lead that he was not no longer mm -hmm. using. Wow, it that's seems so it that's seems like, like that would work. Go ahead. I was going to say it seems like that would work too with you know that that holding it in the right hand and the left hand. It seems like that would work for all kinds of you know, biological imbalances. You know, why would that mm -hmm. be limited just to allergies? Yeah, it well, sounds like that. Sounds like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I think that's a little more far-reaching than that. It just was the, the thing of the moment that he was talking to Yasmin about, and then he starts to bring in what would be something to do yeah. with that. Yeah, you know? that's yeah. That's how he works. Cool. The question drives the answer. Yeah, very yeah. cool. Thank you for sharing, guys. That's cool. Is there, is there anybody else that's gotten their little GANS packs yet in the mail that wants to share a little bit about the sun? <laughs> I'm playing with those. Hey, it's Susan. Can you hear me? Hello? Hi, Susan. Yeah, Hello. Go ahead. Hi. Hey. Yeah, so I'm so excited. I know. I was so glad that you, I mean, I couldn't take the time to watch uh, all the videos and everything. And I'm just so excited that you, um, you know, you did it because um, when we got the package and I, and I opened it, you know, I mean, you could definitely feel the, the consciousness, you know, um, and your consciousness was really just really, you know, emanating from it. Um, and I think I, uh, I think I had posted that um, it just felt like such a coherent, um, seventh dimensional um, consciousness, you know, that you're, you're streaming. And I, I just saw Sammy, she, you know, was sitting down and she, you know, went into her, like her space where she kind of gets um, like her, her body gets kind of jerky, you know? Uh, and, and it's like, I kind of know that she's either processing something or something. So, I mean, I could feel that she was um, kind of, uh, uh, that that consciousness um, from that package was was somehow helping her uh, become more more coherent in the seventh dimension. You know, um, wow. the other thing the other thing is that's exciting is you know that whole thing about the mercury and gold. You know, I mean, the first thing that I think as a parent, you know, is like, oh my gosh, does that mean that that mercury that's in her body from the vaccine is going to become like gold? You know, um, <laughs> oh. so I'm really. Yeah, you Whoa. know, I'm really curious. I'm really Good curious point. to see. Yeah, you know what's gonna what's gonna happen with that. Um, so what this morning nice I was kind of. Huh? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I was like it was encouraging. Um, but because um, I watched that on that on your uh, your uh, your video from last Sunday. Um, but anyway, so this morning I was uh, playing with them, and um, so Sammy was at school, and. Um, I got this like hit from her consciousness, you know, um, that said, uh, the, put, put the ocean gans number two. Um, she, she was like, put it on her bed, you know? Um, so I, and I mm. just put it on her bed for like 20 minutes. And, um, so what she was saying is, is that it will help her cleanse her neurological system. Oh, um, cool. Oh yeah, I know. I know. And she was, I could, I could, you know, feel her saying then, that she said to me, like, you'll be able to hear my words more clearly telepathically. I was like, oh. wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I mean, there's just lots of little things that, you know, I've been, I've been um, playing with uh, here and there, um, mm. you know, off and on. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm excited to hear about some of these other things, um, you know, that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, you know, can, um, you know, come from this. Oh, and the other thing, you'll love this one. Um, uh, so I'm, you know, I started doing the RPM for Sammy, you know, and so uh, yesterday, so you like do, like a, you read real things and then you do, develop a lesson plan. So she wanted to develop a lesson plan out of your, um, one of your writings. 
Um, <laughs> the truth, the understanding of our ultimate reality, what is GANS. Um, well, I haven't done it with yeah. her yet, but I have turned it into a, a, a lesson plan with her uh, to do, Whoa. you know. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. So okay. it actually helped me. It kind of helped me understand a little bit better, you know, about what, what that's all about, you know, what GAN stands for and the nano. And, yeah, it's very, mm. um, it's very, it's, wow. uh, it's, yeah, it's very exciting. So, um, well, would, yeah, thank I you for would, taking all your time. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, gosh. I would, I would love to have her and your input on that. You know, we're, we're coming up with our definitions of what these things are with our limited words and perceptions of feeling it probably beyond what we can, uh, what we're yeah. currently putting down in words, you know. It's, it's like right. we're trying to take a poke at it, and we're trying to kind of get it, but it's, right. it's just... And there's not, yeah, uh, there's not quite the right word. the surface. Yeah, yeah. Because even when you were talking about yeah. the plasma, what was what was coming to me was like, so, yeah, and it is like the potentials and possibilities, but, and it's not exactly what it is, but it's like, from Sammy's perspective, it's like, so the so like the microcosmic universe, which holds like let's say quantum particles, right? And so then when um, like um, consciousness, um, and it, and it means like collective consciousness. Let's say a collective consciousness of souls comes and interacts with that. That it felt like she was saying that that's what she sees as as what plasma is, because oh. then all the yeah. So it is the potentials and possibilities, but think about it like that, now you have soul consciousness interacting with it, and and I mean, so that's where we become the creators, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and when you think about that, we're interacting now, now. The soul is interacting, well, as the human now, you know, being able to uh, access our soul consciousness so much more directly, you know, mm-hmm. and that we're in that soup you know, and that we affect that right. quantum soup, you know. Um, so we literally are, um, yeah, I mean, becoming the creators, you know. Um, and so that whole idea of going back, the bringing, taking that atom back to its original state, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, to me it's part of that whole technology of the, the spherical t- technology because it's spherical, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the wholeness, it's the whole atom, you know prior to just before manifestation, you know. So it's yeah. like, yeah. yeah, it's really cool. And then so. it, and ask it to be whatever you command it to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that we can, you know, just like you were saying, like you, we, we, we can attract, you know, draw to us then, you know, what we sort of, quote, want, you know, or desire, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then mm-hmm. we, you know, we, we make something out of those um, atoms, you know. Yeah, it's very, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's just very cool what you, you know. Well, yeah, oh, I just I love just that. Love this, yeah, and I love, you know, yeah. I love what you wrote because Whoa. it helped me understand. I mean, I don't understand, you know. I mean, but it, it helped me. You wrote it, you wrote it well enough um, and simple enough for someone who's not a scientist to, you know, understand, so... Yeah, I thought it oh, was Oh, really... well, if you're talking about that PDF about what is GANS, I did not write that. Now, one of the other students has put that together. He's a quite a oh. adept oh, okay. himself, but he's, he's shared that with people so that they can share it with others. So I didn't create that, but I, sh- I learned a lot from it. <laughs> yeah, and the understanding? Like the, yeah, the understanding of our ultimate reality. Is that one? Yeah, I didn't uh, write that. Um, I resonate with, with what was there because I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, it's yeah, beautiful to put it yeah. all in one place. Right. I, I mean, there is a couple of like, words that I would change it. You know, I would kind of change a couple of words, but, I mean, that's not – I get the basic idea. Yeah, so it was – yeah, it was really um, – Nice. Yeah, so thank you so much for taking – you know, you and Linda taking oh, all that God, time. I'm to... so glad you decided to play with us, Susan. I'm so cool. Well, I didn't know if I had to have time. You know, I wasn't sure. I was like, you know, I'll... so that's why I didn't. I hadn't, you know, offered it first. But you know, then I was like, okay, sure, I'll try it. And, you know, <laughs> like you're saying, it's like, well, just just play with it. You know, so um, right. yeah, it's been, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been fun. Yeah, it's powerful, powerful stuff. So, 
So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll, uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated yeah. on what all this stuff goes on with with Sammy and how, you know, how she's processing some of the stuff through her body and everything. Oh, yeah. I'm curious I'm, to I'm see. Really curious yeah. how this might interact with, with, with the kids. With our kids. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Help them, you Big know, time. in their physical body. Yeah, help them in their physical bodies and everything, you know. Uh-huh. So, yeah, that's going to be really um, interesting. So, thank you. Please, Susan. Yeah, thank you. All right, we got anybody, two more minutes, Susie. Or yep. Do you have? Do you want to do one more? Is there more? anybody else that like to add anything? <clears throat> okay. Um, have your fat. Yeah. Uh, this is loose. Real briefly. Um, first, thank yes. you. It was hi, wonderful. Louis. Yes, hi. That was wonderful yeah. material. It's it's really, really oh, cool. Good. And uh, I see how it's done. So it's wonderful. One thing we need to keep in mind is that all the negativity that we thought it was, it was there, it isn't. Because what he's giving us is the frequency of love. Yeah. That is the frequency of love. And it just mm. spreads like a virus. It's viral. <laughs> That's the way to change. It is. It's viral. It's the way to change it. So it's wonderful. And so when we part the yeah. virus. <laughs> a vi- viral in a benevolent sense. Absolutely, yeah. No, and the definition yeah. of a viral is something that continues to grow, providing, transforming the information and communicating the information to, regardless of what is there. Oh, so it's not good or bad. Like it just that. is. It's not good or bad. Yeah. It just is. It's what yeah. he does. And See this that. is what it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but viral. Give this. Go ahead. Good. So well, anyway, I'll let you share what you were going to share. Yes, carry on. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for that information because it's really going to make a difference as we continue to communicate it. And I do like to learn more about it. So I have not, to be honest, I've not gone into the website because I've been traveling. I have somebody in hospice. But as uh, soon as I get myself back into a reality of uh, of <laughs> learning, <laughs> I'll definitely <laughs> we'll connect with that. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that that brings up the, um, I didn't even talk about viruses, but there's a whole set of applications for especially the CO2, the viruses. Mm-hmm. He said that that was basically made made from viruses is what he keeps saying. It's made for viruses. And, and every now and then he kind of goes into the whole uh, virus discussion, and he has a very... Um, a uh, lighter view of viruses than right. most of the planet does. Right? I hear you. Um, yep, yep, yep. That's and cool. And how this um, stuff can interact with that process. Yeah. Yeah, Pretty well, amazing. that's what it is. It's a virus. It's a frequency of love. And it's really cool. Oh, okay. It's the power of change. Well, cool, thank that, you. Like the, you're welcome. I was talking, you know, about like flu, flu virus or AIDS or things like that. You know, if, if the... If the body is balanced in a way that that virus action is no longer necessary, mm-hmm. then the thing the the thing in space that's called a virus is no longer required. So it right. no longer expresses. You know, it's not like killing it or chasing it out or annihilating it or whatever. It's just mm-hmm. not required. So it's not there. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, let's see if I can pull together some of that information. He's using a lot in, in Africa and whatnot with various kinds of mm, things that have been perpetuated around the virus subject. Yeah. So, Heather, do you want to let, before we end tonight, do you want to let people know um, who maybe, you know, how people can get in touch with you or people who aren't with the Facebook group, how they could, you know, what do you, where do you, where do you want people to go from here? <laughs> That's a good question because I don't know where to go from here. I know I've been playing with it because it's fun. Other than playing, I've been playing yeah. with it because I, you know, like to do it in my spare time. Um, and I don't know where this is leading at all, Susie. I don't even have a clue. So. For the moment, um, I'm happy to to share what I know. I would like to teach people how to make the stuff, how to make the things, you know, the whole Jesus thing about 
don't just give them a fish, teach them how to fish kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the meantime, you know, just share what we're playing with here and in any way that we can. Um, so for the moment, that website is called um, Avatar um, Awesomeism Avatar Tools. And I've made it just, you know, by invitation only, so it's not visible, you know, to everybody on Facebook. It's just the, the members, and thus far it's only those, you know, they're only practitioners. So if anybody's not on that and they would like to be on that, be involved in the discussion, just send me an instant message um, from the from the Awesomeism site, and then we can add you to that. And then, like, every Sunday so far, we've been having a Zoom meeting where we, you know, talk about the applications of the different stuff and answer questions, and I'll do that again on Sunday. And that, and one's, at one of, that, is, that one's at 1 o'clock? Is that what I you don't said? One what specific? I put on there. I think I did. Yes, we made it earlier because yeah. it was keeping up the people in UK a little bit too late. Yeah. <laughs> we did it later <laughs> in the day. Yeah, and the announcement okay. and the the information for dialing in for that is on there. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Thank you, awesome. thank you so much, Heather, for introducing us all to this. And um, yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of fun playing <laughs> with all of it. Oh, good. But, yeah, yeah, Good. I'm excited. All right. Thank <laughs> you, everybody, for making it tonight. Thanks again, Heather, and um, I'll see you guys all next week. Lots of love, everybody. Bye.